we're going to review the MP100, a budget mini PC from Blackview, and it's at $299. Off the bat, this is great for students and families, but there is an issue. Which can it be? It's not power throttling, but it'd be nice to see your guess in the comments down below. In today's video, we'll be unboxing, checking specs, benchmarks, see the performance, and also see if we can sort this thing out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. So here it is, the Blackview Mini PC. No cash has been exchanged, and all thoughts and opinions are our own. So what we got is the MP100 5825U version. It's got 16 gigabyte RAM and 512 storage. So in the box we get a mini PC with this plastic covering. Ooh, yeah, it's pretty nice that. We also get a manual in many languages and it just covers the basics. One thing that is surprising is there's no Chinese in here. Pulling up this card, we get a vase mount. And with this, we can attach the mini PC to the back of a monitor, onto the wall or underneath your desk. And hit the screws for that. We get a power supply. And this one outputs at 19 volts, 3.42 amps at a maximum of 64.98 watts. It has a barrel jack and it's a switching supply. We have the European version, but as long as you have the cable for your country, you should be good to go. And finally, HDMI cable. And it feels pretty good. So let's move on to the specs. The Blackview MP100 uses the 5825U. This 8-core CPU looks to be a power-efficient version of the 5800H, and it also uses the integrated Vega 8 that we've seen earlier in other mini PCs. It's currently going for $299 on Amazon, but we'll left your links in the description down below if you want to help our channel out at no extra cost to yourself. One thing to note though, is there are other versions of the MP100, one of them being last year's 5700U, and the other a newer 7430U. We were offered this model, but checking specs, both are slower, so we insisted on reading this one instead. So let's take a closer look. And yeah, it's quite pretty. Without going over the top, the design is modern with these diagonal lines. We also have stickers showing it's a Ryzen 7, and the top of the case is a hard plastic. Let's take a look at the front. On the top we have holes for air intake, and then ports, two for USB-C, and a USB-A, rated at USB 3.2 Gen 2. We have a 3.5mm audio jack, BIOS reset, and a power button. It sounds like this. Nice. On the right there's a whole lot of nothing, and on the back is where all the action is. We have ports for 1 gigabit Ethernet LAN, and two USB-A ports, one for USB 2, and the other USB 3.2 Gen 2 again. Next to that we have display port, probably 1.4, HDMI 2.0, a DC jack for power, and along the top, air holes that work as an exhaust. On the left side, we have nothing again. But underneath, we have a label with rubber feet in each corner. They're not too tall, so it won't really help in cooling, but at least it'll stop it from sliding around the desk. There are visible screws, so we'll need a screwdriver to open it. There are vase mounting holes. We have a few more holes for air cooling. And in the corner over here, we have this small rubber flap. It's about time for the size comparison. The Blackview MP100 is fairly average in size. Here's the B-Link EQ13, and the MP100 is around a centimeter taller. It's roughly around the same size as a Rear 10 Alloy 9, but it gets completely dwarfed if you throw a K10 in the mix. Here's a popular handheld gaming console, the Nintendo Game Boy. A three and a half inch floppy disk, and this one has Algo music on there. Remember this software? Absolutely mental. And finally, a Rewatch tea bag. The Blackview MP100 is four tea bags big. Now that it's out of the box, let's give it a keyboard, monitor, and mouse, and give it a try. On the first boot, we're greeted to a Windows setup screen. You'll have to do this once, and it's very straightforward. Simply select your language, region, keyboard type, and then type in your username. We didn't need to use our Wi-Fi or log into Microsoft, which is great to see, because we can check for malware and viruses. And we're happy to report that a full scan in Windows Defender came clean as did scans from both Avast and Malwarebytes. Windows 11 Pro is installed, and it's at version 23H2. This is activated, and if you go online, you can easily update to the latest release. One thing to add is Blackview have added one tool to our system at stock, the RGB lighting control software. With this, we can control the line of light that runs along the top of our mini PC case. Currently it's set to rainbow, we can switch it to breathing, color cycle, 
off and auto. Then underneath that we have the colour speed and brightness, but yeah, it's just stuff to play with really. So how is it to use this mini PC? Oh, well, glad to see that Windows is pretty snappy, and tasks like internet shopping, and creative documents in office are a walk in the park. We can even create 2D artwork with Krita, making this a great mini PC for the family, or one for a university student. To be honest, you could do some video editing with this, but you need to stick at 1080p, as 4K would be a stretch. Saying that, it'd be quite good to be used as an audio workstation. The CPU is very capable, and also the mini PC itself is quiet, which we'll get to later on in the video. Talking about video, here's some 4K streaming in YouTube. And we can report that once the video has buffered, we have a very smooth experience. But when checking benchmarks, things start to fall a little flat. The 5825U should be an upgrade from the 5700U, but we can only see slight improvements to the CPU scores. Here's some more 3D mark. Blender. Cinnabon R23. And Shizuku Dismark. The scores we have here are typical for a fast PCI 3 before and as the processor is Zen 3, we're limited to that on the PCI Express lanes. Next up is the Wi-Fi strength test. We get 77% on the 5GHz band, which is pretty good, and we experience no drops. But to be honest, we're more concerned about how games will perform with this lower than expected GPU score. So we ran the Rise of the Tomb Raider benchmark in 1080p to see if we could improve on this by faffing in the BIOS. And luckily, it was a very easy setting to change. At stock, the frame buffer is 1GB, but changing this to 3 raises our FPS significantly. We did try other settings too, like altering TDP, but we had no improvements. So let's check out some games. We didn't really expect anything from 4K resolution, but it is Cuphead. It is playable, but at 1080p, full speed. We kept the 1080p resolution for Dave the Diver, a heavier 2D title. While it isn't really action-packed, it runs okay, but again, we need to lower resolution, this time to 720p, for full speed. And now Rocket League. I'm sure if you can tell, but I'm seeing a pattern emerge here. Or maybe we're just expecting a little too much from this chipset. Next up, Dota 2. At 1080p best looking settings, we're hovering around 32 FPS. And if we lower that slider, much better. We then tried lowering resolution, but if you check the stats at the top right, we're nowhere near 100% usage on either the CPU or GPU, so there may be an issue elsewhere. Moving on to favorite now, Fortnite. And at 1080p far high settings on the fast renderer, we're sitting around 40 FPS. And at 720p, around 70. And here's Counter Strike 2, 720p low settings. And while we were hitting 60 FPS, it's not the most stable, making this more of a backup than a primary esports gaming device. That said, we did manage to get a few frags. So let's get back to the BIOS. As mentioned earlier, we do have a nice amount of options, including frame buffer and TDP settings. And even though we can control the fan, there was no real need to do so, as there was no noise or heat issues. We did try to raise TDP, and even overclock memory. But still, no performance gained. In here we have the option of secure boot for Valorant. Then we connected our SSD via USB to start up Batacera Linux. As you can see, Batacera 41 boots up fine. We can connect to our Wi-Fi. Then we can pair our Bluetooth controller so we can test out some emulation. Like some arcade, here's Neo Geo. Killer Instinct 2 runs full speed. As does Daytona USA 2 on the Sega Model 3.
Let's not forget the home machines like the C64. Commodore Amiga. PSP with 5 times upscale. And PlayStation 2. Here we have Ridge Racer 5 running at 3 times upscale at full speed. But God of War 2, on the other hand, is a bit more demanding. At two times resolution, we're almost at full speed. What if we lower it down to one and a half? 60 FPS. We'll now move back to Windows to test out some of the higher level emulation. Starting off with some full speed Wii U. Yeah, it's running pretty well. Here's Tekken Tag 2. And some PlayStation 3. As you might be able to see, this system of stock can play PlayStation 3, but it's not quite there. Let's investigate further with temps and fan noise. At idle it stays under 60 degrees, and it's a very quiet machine. And it uses from 8 to 9 watts. While in game, it does get a bit warmer, but the temps rarely go over 70 degrees, and the system remains to be a very quiet runner. And it sounds a bit like this. Pulling around 40 watts from the wall. When stressing the CPU and GPU, temps stay below 80 degrees. There are no signs of thermal throttling, and this is one of the quietest mini PCs we've ever seen. And it pulls just under 36 watts. I think it's about time for a teardown. Let's go. Once the screws are out, we can pull the tag. And under this, we find a secret 2.5 inch SATA drive bay, perfect for an old Batacera SSD. We like that a lot. But let's dive in a bit deeper. Nah. We'll need a screwdriver with a longer, thinner shaft. And yeah, this is pretty clean. We have the PCA NVMe. Over here is the Wi-Fi module, and you'll be able to switch that out if you wish. And then we have the memory, a single stick of DDR4, even though there are two slots. The NVMe used is from Racen, and it's actually PCIe Gen 4. The reason why we got PCIe 3 before speeds is probably due to the limit of the Zen 3 chipset. Here's the memory, one stick of 16 GB DDR4, running at 3200 MHz. And it's by King's... As you can see here, we have two M2 slots, in case you want to add some more memory for storage. But let's see if we can get in any further. There we go. So there's the blower fan, but let's get in deeper. So the thermal paste looks okay, but by removing the heatsink, we destroyed them thermal pads. This one used by Blackview seems to be quite thin, and the MOSFET labelled R22 doesn't even have contact with the copper heatsink. Either way, let's clean this up. We'll give it a new thermal pad. This one's probably a little thicker. A fresh coat of MX6 thermal paste. And we'll switch out the one stick of memory for two giving us dual channel memory. And this should speed things up a lot. Yes, we did double the memory size, 
but it's due to it being dual channel where we see large improvements. Not only in Geekbench, but also in TimeSpy, where it's almost as quick as a 5800H, albeit being much more power efficient. So finally, we can see the true potential of this chipset. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Blackview MP100 is a Ryzen mini PC that can be bought with a fairly low budget. It's very snappy on Windows, can play casual games, and is also capable of high-end emulation such as the PlayStation 3. Unfortunately, selling this with one stick of memory really hurts performance, and we hope that in the future, Blackview will sell this with two sticks at stock. So what are your thoughts of this computer? Yes, we know it's not capable of playing AAA games, but at this price point, you could do a lot worse. Anyway, links down below, and, uh, summary? Got a mini PC from Blackview, boxes bare, runs PS2, 8-core chip, it stays real cool, mom could use it, so could you! Here's a huge thank you to all of those on our Patreon. These superheroes are helping us keep the lights on, and if you want to help us out, please consider joining up. Oh, remember to like and subscribe. We also have a Discord if you fancy a gin wag. This is Mini Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Oh, we've got these videos as well. Just new videos and recommended. Ta-ra. <laughs>